Allora, è possibile che siamo in diretta, so it's possible that we're already live. Oh, so, there's always, there's always this part of, of the, uh, no, no. the meeting set up where my phone's like blowing my nose or something. And, and, and this is what everyone, what everyone usually sees. Um, okay, so it looks like we're live on Facebook. Um, no, Ricky, il mio telefono è lì. I'm trying to see. faccio solo foto. Ascolta, prima, Ricky, perché avevo girato il telefono, non è che avevo girato lo schermo. Adesso sta fermo. Ma la risoluzione è questo romante, pezzi, ora dietro. Girano, per diretta, poi così. Ah, sì, ma noi non ci vediamo, non sappiamo se siamo in inquadratura. Ma ti guardo in quadro io, forse ho tanto. Io ve le preferivo così, provo. Cila, posso provare a girare l'inquadratura? Uh, un attimo ok so all right all right we're um we're live right now siamo in diretta we're live from uh, romania italy my name is sheila donahue i'm founder of vero Uh, we go around okay. the world uh, seeking out small production okay. wines and olive oils from small um, from small no, producers who are also farmer, farming their land. And, uh, and we sell them across uh, the U.S. to restaurants, wine stores, and also to consumers. Um, our website is verovinogusto.com. And, uh, and also uh, uh, jo joining us uh, will be one of our clients, um, who is the owner of Uncorked Wine Shop in uh, Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach. His name is Jeff. He, uh, he won't be joining us immediately, but, um, but we'll, start, uh, we'll start without him. And um, so, let me, uh, so let, let me introduce our special guests. And uh, we have Ricardo Siveri, who is live from his garden in uh, Romagna, Italy. And, um, and next to him is uh, D Davide Castagnoli, who is the owner of, uh, of, Braschi, of the ba Braschi wines. And, um, and I'm, really, I'm really excited about today's uh, uh, Vero talk um, because I, um, I have to say, I've been really inspired by, um, by Ricardo, um, who, um, who is a self-taught chef. And, um, and I actually have a, my own personal story. I was uh, kind of on, in the uh, runner-up stages to get on MasterChef Italy. And, uh, and I, uh, I found out that I had to learn how to plate, so how to put food nicely on, on, on dishes. And uh, Davide, who's friends with Ricardo, had uh, introduced me to Ricardo. And Ricardo was very generous to show me spent basically a whole afternoon in his, uh, in his kitchen showing me how to plate dishes. So that's how I learned his story. And um, so, um, so Ricardo and, uh, and, and Davide are both uh, what we call in Italian Romagnoli. So they come from um, this area called Romagna. And Romagna is, um, I see Elaine, Elaine's uh, participating. So she, Elaine is in Emilia, which is the uh, western part of Emilia Romagna. It's like a really long sort of this rectangular region. So where Elaine is is Piacenza, which is like the western side. Then as you go east, east you'll get to Bologna. That's where I live. That's sort of like the hub of uh, of central northern Italy. And then if you keep going eastward, you get to the Adriatic Sea. And right before, right there is Romagna. So Romagna is an area that, that has the sea, it has hills, and it also has mountains. And, um, and so it has a lot of agriculture. So we have wines, uh, it's a popular wine region. So we, we, uh, we sell Braschi wines, that's uh, um, da Davide's winery. And, um, and then we also, um, it, but it's also an area uh, probably, when you drive through Romania, you just see um, just loads of agriculture. So a lot of fruit trees, a lot of vegetables, 
and of course vineyards, vineyards as well. And um, so, so when I when I visited um, Braski back in um, in March, uh, I found out that Ricardo, who uh, was working for a restaurant um, in Romania, he he lost his job, uh, you know, a little more than a year ago. So he he comes from a family of um, of, of farmers. So it's the, the tradition of you know of uh, what, what they, they do there. Um, and his, his family, you know, his like grandparents and prior were like full-time farmers. And then, um, and then his, uh, his, 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 his own parents, let's say they made, right. they weren't making enough farming, let's say. So they were started to do other jobs. And so when Ricardo was without, uh, without a, a job basically a year ago, he he turned to farming, and so so today's focus is about his project, which is kind of experimenting with his garden, and uh, and and um, for example, with depending upon the fruit or vegetable, uh, determining when's the best time to pick, you know, to pick the, the vegetable and, and make the dishes. Uh, so, uh, do you want to say something, Ricardo? If, if it's in Italian, I'll translate. Ciao a tutti. Che dire? Sono felice di partecipare a questo evento. Niente, siamo pronti per spiegarvi la nostra avventura assieme a Davide, mio grande amico, e nonché consulente di vini. Ecco. Quindi ti ridò la linea. You have to translate. So, un attimo, devo tradurre. So basically, yes, basically, he said, Ricardo said he's really excited to, to be here uh, showing you his project. And uh, and then he, he also just said he really, you know, he's really good friends with Davide. That Davide actually lives right down the street from him. Uh, Davide, would you like to say a couple words? I have to say that I am very happy too to be here with uh, my friend. Uh, the best chef uh, we have uh, in our region. No, uh, I like uh, too much uh, the way he's cooking uh, for that. Uh, that I think uh, tonight uh, we can try to pairing uh, his uh, wonderful, amazing food with uh, our uh, wines. And uh, I think it's time, Sheila, to sue the, see directly the garden with the fruit because uh, we are uh, near um, the, and the sound is, I think is getting off <laughs> and uh, it's time to see directly the, Why the fruit. Can the you vegetable. show us? You buy the data on the video. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Please. Vi faccio vedere il mio, il mio progetto. Eh, so cui... showing us this garden. Un attimo. Perché non prendiamo una, una, una bicchiere di uh, San Giovese? Infatti stavo portando quello, mi metto il rosso. So let's start with the, who wants to play? Ehm, siccome so che... We're starting, we're starting with the San Giovese uh, from Braschi. This is Costone, um, Costone Superiore. It's an organic uh, San Giovese. And, um, and we're starting with the San Giovese because Ricardo told me it was it's a tradition of um, of the farmers to to have uh, San, San Giovese and pair it with fresh uh, onions in the garden. The, Ricardo, è una yeah. tradizione giusto di bere San Giovese in giardino. Esatto, è una tradizione per noi agricoltori di bere San Giovese. Eh, è la nostra cultura, diciamo, ci dice che in Romagna quando una, una, un turista viene in Romagna la prima cosa che si offre non è un bicchiere di acqua ma un bicchiere di vino. E questo è... Un attimo, appunto... um, so I, perché devo tradurre. So, so Riccardo okay. basically was, uh, was, you know, just saying... Um, about this tradition of, uh, of drinking Sangiovese as you're out in your fields. Um, and, uh, and he said that uh, uh, Romania, which has a very, um, a very welcoming culture, so, uh, so you should definitely visit at some point. Um, 
because one of the traditions is to greet is to greet uh, a guest uh, with a, a glass of wine. So, so cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 So, so this um, uh, vineyard is from um, this vineyard is from Bertinoro, um, and Bertinoro is actually uh, a town um, that's known for for Sangiovese, which is which is red wine. Even though years ago it was known for white wine, um, which is Al Al Albano white wine. That's the third wine we're going to have. But, but I'll tell the story about Bertinoro when we get to that. Um, so. Uh, so, uh, Ricardo, will you show us your garden? Ci fai vedere il giardino? Vi accompagno nel mio orto. Partiamo con le nostre ciliegie. So, this is cherries. Commenta tu, Sheila, e tutti i nostri amici, se può sembrare un grappolo d'uva o no. Guardate. Guarda quello lì. Oh, look at those. And but when uh, when will they be ready? Quando sarà sarà pronte le ciliegie? Queste, queste ciliegie sono già in fase di maturazione, tant'è che eh, le prime le abbiamo già raccolte e andremo avanti eh, step per step in base alla maturazione. Eh, da guardando la colorazione, da da. Sto guardando. Guardando la colorazione e la maturazione. Queste ancora sono indietro, come vedi, sono ancora un po' Uh, diciamo un rosso molto chiaro deve essere un rosso intenso e quindi tra, tra deve... un mese saranno pronti o, o meno no farà una quindicina di giorni so in 15 days we'll be uh, they'll be harvesting the cherries I have to say one thing about uh, cherry because uh, as you know the first uh, flower and, and the fruit <laughs> taste uh, of the Sangiovese is uh, cherry. Mm -hmm. The most important uh, taste uh, and flower, the, the Sangiovese grape it is. So for that, uh, it's, it's, uh, we can pair the cherry with the, the wine. Or Anyone not? here uh, smell the cherries or taste oh, them? Yeah, wine, yes. yeah. Is, is yeah we, we smell and know. taste the cherries here. In your Oye. Sangiovese. Here in the Hampton. The most great sensation that the Sangiovese is the one that 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 is the Ora vi accompagno nella parte sempre di fruttetto e vi farò vedere okay. le albicocche che sono anche quelle in fase di maturazione. Ok, he's gonna, he's gonna show us his apricot trees that are also about to, uh, about, that they're about ready also, like the cherries to be harvested. And by the way, I know everyone, um, there's a couple other people on Zoom uh, feel free to show your videos, and if you have any question, you can just unmute. There's a small enough enough group of us. Oh wow! Okay, look at those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sheila, as you know, is working in a biodynamic and organic uh, way uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what else? Ci spostiamo verso l'orto nella, nella parte diciamo vegetale. So e... the vegetable garden. Ok. Allora, Ci fai vedere anche... l'orto? Sì. Ok. Posso, Sheila, posso spiegarti subito la parte del nome eh, per cui ho dato questo nome a questo piccolo progetto? Così ti spiego, ti faccio vedere. Come si chiama? Allora, il nostro progetto si chiama Sovescio. 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 Uh, che significa in italiano Sovescio? Sovescio è una vecchia pratica che si faceva nell'agricoltura, nell fatta da, dai nostri agricoltori, 
che um, oggi, a, oggi giorno non si usa più per, a, aggiunto, per appunto le tempistiche e quindi si fa tutto molto più veloce perché con la, la pratica di solvation invece è tutto molto più lento e si segue le, diciamo, la, il ciclo vitale della, de, della natura e quindi si va con le tempistiche diciamo, della, della, della madre terra. Ora ti, uh, ti un mostro... attimo devo tradurre. So, okay. this, uh, this project, um, you know, as you know, it's just it's evolving. Um, but he calls it Suvesho, which I didn't even know, you know, what, what it means. But he said it's a term among uh, farmers that has to do with um, just really uh, relying on nature's timing, you know, not trying to force anything, you know, it's kind of going with the, the flow from an natural perspective. Cosa fai? 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 Eh, proprio di, di legumi dove c'è il favino proteico il, il fagiolo nano eh, eh, eccetera queste, queste piante vanno, vengono fatte crescere vengono portate a fiore dopodiché vengono tranciate e eh, fatte essiccare nel suolo e poi vengono eh, lavorate portate sotto terra perché facendo così eh, rilascia l'azoto e mh, va a nutrire il terreno con tutte quelle sostanze che servono per poi coltivare. So they will try to do it. So that it basically looks like weeds, right? In this, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, field. It's there, there's fr fruit trees and then, and then what looks like weeds. But he said actually that there, there are beans that are, that are growing in, in the field. And so, so that it's both to provide, you know, food But, but it's also, it also helps to, um, to like, get nourishment to... I can't feel it. Work. Ma, el, come si chiama la, la, fa, hai detto fava? Eh, eh sì, è favino, eh, pisello proteico, favino, e eh, fagiolo, favino. favino like sì. Bean, I think. Fammi vedere. Elaine, Questi qui sono... Elaine, you can help me translate, too. <laughs> She's from New Jersey. She lives in uh, Italy. Elaine, we're, we're, in the, we're in West Hampton, New York. <laughs> oh, oh a whole group of Hi. people here. How do you do? I'm from New Jersey originally, not too far. <laughs> and, then, and then Irene is my cousin. She's in Southampton. So uh, I invited her Gina. over. Hey, Irene. <laughs> I still. I have it. I still have my pajamas on. That's why I don't <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, for any any of you who are not in, in Northeast United States, it's a very rainy, cold Memorial Day weekend. So it's actually a good, a good day for a wine tasting. <laughs> yeah, so the, I'm going to have some wine. I think it's a good idea. Um, hey, Ricardo, um, Ricardo. Uh, Dimmi. Ci fai vedere i piatti perché siamo, sì. siamo, um, okay. siamo quasi allora. pronti per, uh, per il famoso, direi. Non okay. so se allora, vuoi ci fare spostiamo. vedere altre parti dell'orto. Va bene, no. ci spostiamo nella parte, diciamo, cucina de, dall'orto alla tavola. Ok, so he's gonna okay. Start, we're going to start with the, with the actual cooking demonstration soon. And he's showing us uh, another part of his garden. So th this is the part that I that I saw, I think, which which is the I know this one is been a yeah, yeah. So th these are all different um probably vegetables. Sono sono verdure, giusto? Sì. Anche. E fragola? E fragola no. Dimmi Sheila. Allora, ti faccio vedere una, una carrellata veloce di tutte le piante che possiedo al momento. Come vedi qua c'è della cicoria, è una cicoria diciamo da taglio, dove si, eh, vengono usati per fare i ripieni della pasta ripiena classica nostra. 
Mm-hmm. È un'erba so amara. Qua abbiamo, abbiamo le fragoline di bosco. Oh, uh, uh, fragolini di bosco. So, esatto. Uh, fragolino is a little strawberry. And these are like wild strawberries, basically. I think we, they, we find them here oh, in uh, Long Island. Yeah. yeah. Queste sono patate. Cosa? Cosa? Sono pata patate. Oh, potatoes. Potatoes. Questi sono asparagi. Asparagus. E la stagione per asparagi, no? Esatto. Esatto. Asparagus season, no. You know. <laughs> Abbiamo zucchini. Zucchini. Appena trapiantati. <laughs> Piselli. Cos'è? Piselli. Ah, piselli, so peas. Mm. Esatto. Abbiamo fatto anche un piatto. So, if anyone has any questions, as I said, just, just ask away. Cos'è? E sono fio fiori? Eh, questi sono, sono fiori, ma sono fiori che aiutano l'orto, eh, che va in sinergia con le piante e le aiuta per... Uh, sono piante antiparassitari. Invece di dare trattamenti, eh, si possono eliminare parassiti, tenerli lontani con uh, queste piante che rilassano odori eh, abbastanza pungenti, da poter tenere lontani che, quegli insetti che eh, possono creare problematiche alle piante. So that's a flower that keeps insects away. Oh. So, because he's, he's um, organic, so he doesn't mm -hmm. use um, insecticides. So. Abbiamo pomodori. Sono ancora giovani. Ma... Poi, Sheila, sì. noi abbiamo, dopo una giornata di, eh, di lavoro, faticoso, eh, arriviamo a questo orario dove facciamo l'aperitivo con uh, sempre San Giovese e prendiamo i nostri ravanelli oh. che si usa per il pensimonio, prendiamo dei cipollotti oppure e, e ce li mangiamo così, in pensimonio. Ma e così in giardino? Esatto. Fai, Una fai. Volta... Una fammi vedere, di... fammi vedere. Mangiamo, <ride> Ragazzi, una volta raccolti, gli diamo una piccola lavata. Me lo offro al mio amico lavoratore, Davide, e io mi prendo il ravanello. E ora, e ora facciamo una piccola, e ora facciamo una piccola degustazione. Con un bicchiere di vino. Il mio qui, questo mio. Ok. Sempre cheese a voi cheers. tutti. Cheers. Cheers. Here I'll uh, have a, a broccoli. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't, it's not from the garden though. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Ora faremo dei piatti eh, con i nostri prodotti dell'orto e vi farò vedere cosa abbiamo pensato. So, devo tradurre. So, now, now's the cooking demonstration. So, I want some questions for you. Ti deve sta traducendo. So, they're, uh, they're cook he's cooking with all vegetables from his garden. Ci fai vedere le verdure? Abbiamo, uh, abbiamo piselli. Peas. Cipollotto, onion. Fresh onions. Look at the radishes, they're funny looking. They're like oblong. Fava. Fava. Fava? Oh, it's like lima beans. Fava. Fava. Like lima beans. Yeah. <laughs> e, e basta, no. Ah, cherries. Okay. He has cherries and apples. Quindi ci sono i piselli e pava, giusto? Piselli, pava. So peas and lima beans. 
Okay, okay. Allora, Sheila, <ride> Sheila. Sì? Ora ti propongo un piatto che è una, um, tipico nostro della tradizione, mangiare la fava, è, la, è il primo ortaggio della stagione primaverile e, um, e nello stesso tempo vengono tolte dalle fosse um, a maturazione il formaggio di fossa appunto di sogliano, è il pecorino, questo wow. qua. Ok, so, so the ingredients, uh, what he's doing right now is the lima beans with um, this um, very pungent cheese um, called formaggio di fossa. Fossa means, uh, it means like under, under, in the underground, you know, area, basically. What they do is they, when they, they age the cheese on underground, um, and, and that's the fossa. And that's a tradition from a, a local town in, in Romania. And then they have pecorino as well. They educated in something on the ground? Ricardo, how do you formaggio di, um, di fossa? Allora, the formaggio di fossa eh, viene fatto. Te lo spiega meglio, te lo spiega, te lo spiega meglio Davide. Okay. okay. Oh, it's a typical cheese uh, from this area, and, but, but not on. Not only the cheese, but it's a, a typical way to aging this kind of cheese in the cave, uh, in, the, um, in the ground. So uh, in one, uh, once a year, uh, some farmers uh, put this uh, cheese, the cheese inside the cave for six months. And uh, after six months, they open and, and they, found, uh, they find uh, uh, something uh, very interesting because the cheese changes a lot and the aging in the cave uh, let uh, the, the cheese uh, have uh, more uh, taste, flowers, uh, and more strong. And uh, it's, it's a typical of uh, this place. And for what Fossa now is uh, famous all over the world and uh, it's present in uh, um, every most important restaurant in New York, Los Angeles, everywhere in the world. So, so in theory, you could try to make your own formaggi di fossa. Okay, <laughs> so just, I, just I, dig, I, dig a hole and leave the cheese there for six months. I was wondering, how do they stop animals from eating it? Like, how is it That's a good question. Ma, Davide, um, uh, there's a question. How do, you, how do you prevent animals from eating the cheese when it's underground? Um, I could be thought. No, no, the cheese, no, no. cheese is already done. And, uh, the, the, they, they, they put the, the cheese the, directly when uh, it's mature after two, three months, when uh, the cheese is already done. And they put uh, the, inside the, the cave just to, for aging. And, uh... um, can, I, can I make a comment, Irene, um, Sheila? Sure. Um, no, just to say, I think, well, he's saying cave, but I think pit is more like it because it's a hole in the ground oh, yeah. and so it has before. hay, no? Yes. That hay which lines it and then they put layers of the cheese and then they cover it with the hay and then more layers of cheese and then it's covered so it's not accessible so yeah, that yeah. the animals can't eat it and neither can your neighbors. <laughs> No one can steal until it's aged. And it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful cheese. Yeah, I look at pity because of access. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the wall is, yes. I think it's um, about four or five meters uh, in the underground. And then uh, it, it clo uh, they close the, the, the wall and they reopen after uh, the, uh, the time of aging is finished, after six months about. And the cheese become very, very strong than uh, before. And they covered with, uh, with uh, some vegetables. Okay. All so right. Let's so okay. let's start with the second wine. Iniziamo, um, sorry, un attimo. So we'll start with the second wine. Iniziamo degustare famoso, okay? Okay. Allora, col famoso, col famoso avevamo pensato di fare una, appunto questo formaggio di fossa con la fava perché sono le primizie della stagione primaverile. E quindi è un classico piatto 
che, che, si, fa, che si mangia in aperitivo o, in, o a merenda, questa fava accompagnata col pecorino e una grattugiata di limone. E noi l'abbiamo pensata con... Una... Un attimo, de de devo tradurre. Sì. So, the, the dish that he's making, he said, is, is really nice for uh, what's famous in Italy, is aperitivo. So, aperitivo is like our snacks, if you will. Uh, you know, I mean, you call it happy hour, but it's, you know, whenever you kind of just want to hang out with a glass of wine and a bite to eat. So, um, so the dish he's, he's making with with the, the lima beans and and the, the pecorino cheese is what um you know would be good for an aperitivo. Okay, do you buy the dinner uh piatto che fai? Smai. Okay. Abbiamo fatto in forma di aperitivo e e l'abbiamo fatto una in una versione eh diciamo un po' più una, una sorta di rivisitato, ecco. Una versione un po' più gourmet. Quindi abbiamo creato una, abbiamo creato una fonduta di, di pecorino. Che okay, messo so this is a fondue of pecorino that he created? Di, pec di pecorino. Abbiamo sgusciato le nostre fave. So, and then he has like smashed uh, lima beans. Andremo a condire con un, con un olio biologico sempre della, del fondo paderno, che è Braschi. So then uh, extra virgin olive oil is pouring over. Organic. Una grattugiata di limone. And a little lemon peel. And he's mixing it. Almanza visto mille persone. Quindi metti la fava dentro fondutto di formaggio esatto dopo ti faccio vedere il classico so the lima beans are now in the um in the oh, yeah. of, of, uh, pecorino cheese abbiamo preso le nostre ciliegie quelle più acerbe quelle più indietro più acerbe so these are uh, cherries that are if, it's, if you remember um when he was showing us the cherries before, they, they weren't yet ready to eat. But one of the things that um, Ricardo is doing is experimenting with, with harvesting fruit and vegetables at different times. So he probably is doing that because he wants that more um, tart taste of uh, the cherries. And this is a salsa di ciliegia. È arricchita con della dell'angustura, che è un distillato di erbe che si usa solitamente nei cocktail, eh, soprattutto nel cocktail americano, fatto da bitter uh, vermouth, campari e soda. Oh, Noi andremo un attimo. So, so it's a, a, a sauce he made from the, you know, tart cherries, and then he added a an herb um, that uh, I'll have to get the name of, but interestingly, it's an herb that they also use to make um, cocktails. So you know how co cocktails have that bit bitter? Yeah. That there's some um, liqueurs or whatever, like, I don't know, let's say uh, Campari, let's just say that has a bitter taste. So it's probably one of these plants that they use. Come si chiama il nome della pianta che da, che metti quel... Nella Come si chiama? Eh, sono, è un distillato di erbe, sono tante erbe. Oh, so it's a lot of herbs. Hai fatto two, erbe. no? Come? No, Hai fatto no. Two. no, 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 non ho fatto io. Ok. So basically it's a mixture of different, of different herbs. Ora faccio degustare a Davide, mentre io mi bevo invece il suo vino, degusto il suo vino. <laughs> Okay, it's so, uh, so this uh, this wine that we we just poured is called um, famoso. Un attimo che spiego. So fa famoso, which means famous in um, in Italian, um, is the name of this grape. And uh, and back in two thousand one, there was this farmer um, Montalti in uh, Monte Sasso. So if you look at the label of, of this, it says Monte Sasso. Mo Monte Sasso is an area 
mountainous area going towards Tuscany. Um, so you're up around 300 meters. Uh, what would that be? A thousand feet. And, um, and so the farmer was, was making um, wine for many years from, from this, these grapes in his field. And one day he was like, he, he really wanted to find out what these grapes were because he wasn't able to identify it. And he went to the University of Bologna and found out um, that it, it's a grape that they thought was extinct. So, um, so Braski uh, makes the famoso wine that we're, we're having now um, and they get their grapes from that original vineyard. So, yeah. Poi Davide vuoi spiegare di altro su famoso? Uh, thank you Sheila for present very well our uh, our uh, wine our special wine as uh, as we told uh, uh, famoso it's a very important uh, top ten grape variety and uh, it's produced only here in uh, Romagna and um, when uh, it was discovered in 25 years ago. We, we made for, for first, we use the, the grape from the family that discovery, uh, we discovery the, 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 the grape from um, the family Montalti. I think um, it's, it's not so much famous in the world, but it's very good this vino famoso. So yeah, it's kind of I ironic. It's called you to buy it from the Chila Web Shop. That no one knows about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very strange name, but it's, it's truly, it's, it's yeah, a real it's, name. It's, it's a dry, it's a, uh, it's the the a most, dry, uh, uh, un attimo, Davide. So this is like a, a dry, um, uh, you know, dry white wine. It has, um, it has a, a lot of, uh, you know, good amount of acidity, but it also has a min mineral component to it that um, that oh, makes right. it more even like uh -huh. um, like wines um, from like Chablis. It, you know, um, it, it kind of uh, you know it is it's a wine that has characteristics of uh, you know of very well known oh. wines in the world, even though it's not really known. Very nice to pair. This uh, aperitif um, this recipe with this wine, very, very, very nice. So, and, uh, what are you eating? Can you sh show us what you're eating? Sorry, can you please, please? Ricardo, ci fai vedere cosa cosa mangiate? Adesso stiamo degustando l'aperitivo che abbiamo appena fatto con il formaggio di fossa, la fonduta di formaggio di fossa, fava e una, una coulisse di ciliegia alla, alla, alla angostura. Ok, so, so they're... Um, Abbinato al famoso, che in poche parole aiuta a sgrassare la, eh, diciamo, la, la consistenza della, del formaggio e la dolcezza della fava, va in contrasto a questi, due, nice. a questi due ingredienti. Good job. So they're having the, uh, the, the dish that oh, he no, no. showed us, you know, the, with the, 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 the fondue, yeah. the cheese fondue with the fa fava, um, fava's lima beans and, and with like the, those bitters and everything. Um, and they're saying that it pairs really well with acidity. Oh. Yeah. Yes, Elaine? Sheila, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I thought that the fondue is um, pecorino. No, yes. uh, uh, or parmigiano. Pecorino. Is it the formaggio di fossa or, or the pecorino? Di fossa. Fonduto? È formaggio di fossa di pecora, pecorino. So it's two, two uh, pieces. Uh, no, it's the, um, it's actually the, 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 the formaggio di fossa is uh, sheep cheese, is pecorino. Oh. Chila. Yes. See? Sí. There were two cheeses. Uh, Ricardo, è solo un, un formaggio che ha messo. Sì, è solo un formaggio. Il ok. Fossa viene, okay. Viene chiamato, è, è un pecorino, è un formaggio di pecora che viene stagionato in queste fosse e, e di okay. conseguenza prende il nome. Ok. Chila, è la stagionatura. 
Okay, so just to clarify, because there was some confusion, it was just one cheese uh, that was this, uh, what they call formaggio di falsa, the one that, that's uh, aged in the cave. And, but it's a sheet cheese, so, so it's actually also considered a pecorino, um, a pe pecora sheep, sheep in Italian. So, so just, to, just to clarify that. Um, Ricardo, ci fai vedere uh, la, ci condividi la, la ricetta dopo, giusto? Okay, just uh, he, He's going to share the recipe, so mm. we'll, we'll share it on our blog, so. I want to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Vedi uh, pure che io vi aspetto qua. E quindi andiamo a Chile. So, uh, Riccardo, hai, hai un altro piatto? Sì, è un altro piatto che l'abbiniamo all'Albana. Um, all okay, so on to the third one now. <laughs> so the next one um, is um, is Albana. Uh, it's a Albana uh, dolce. Dolce means sweet. And, um, and there's, um, there's, there's, I mentioned earlier there was a story I wanted to to tell you um, that it was related to Bertinoro, which is. Yeah. Where um, where the, the first red wine comes from. Uh, so, un, un attimo che uh, volevo uh, spiegare uh, la bana. So, um, so back in around the fifth century, in the fifth century, there there was this woman. Um, her name was Gala Placidia, who. Um, uh, became um, a, basically she was the acting Roman emperor for for a while. Uh, Gala Placidia in around around 489 AD. She became acting emperor because her son was supposed to be the emperor, but he was too young. So so basically she was standing in for her son until he got I guess he turned eighteen or something. Um, and um, and uh, and so obviously she was a very powerful wo woman, and um, and this was her was this was her favorite wine. So um, so yeah, so she she loved this wine so much. She said it was like drinking gold. So you see the color. The color has this. Uh, uh, it's a really deep um, straw straw yellow color. And um, and that color actually comes from um, from the, the grape. So so the Albana grape has a very thick skin, and so having that thick skin imparts you know color you know color on the wine, and it also has a very high acidity. So um, you know the best thing I, I one thing I always look for wine is 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 balance a balance a lot of times between the acidity and sweetness. So because it has a lot of natural acidity, it, 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 it does, uh, suits itself well as a sweet wine. Um, and, uh, and so, um, so Ber Ber coming back to Bertinoro, which is where the, the first wine comes from, um, Bertinoro, the name of, comes, the name Bertinoro comes from drink, the word that Ga Gala Placidia came up with, which is like drinking gold. Mm. So way, way back, you know, thousands of years ago, the most popular wine actually was, was this wine. You know, even though even though today in Bertinoro they mainly grow Sangiovese. So, okay. Ho spiegato la storia. Ci fai vedere il piatto? Sì, Sheila, ehm, con, uh, sempre con il famoso, ti volevo fare un altro piatto, molto velocemente. Ti può andare bene? Sì, hey, he's going to do another dish. Cos'è? Allora, questo è un piatto che si mangia in aperitivo, come prima portata. E, um, è un uomo di camicia con uh, eh, bacon affumicato e piselli. Ok, so he... Um... He's, he is going to show us another dish that in, in Italy, in Italy, they have traditionally 
as uh, especially in, in Romania, uh, they traditionally have um, as again uh, with the aperitivo. So it, it's a dish you know you would have with wine, uh, you know, at happy hour or whatever, sitting with friends, um, and and they call it uh, wova in camicia. So so it's a um, it's a, a, an egg with a shirt is, is literally, literally what it means. And, um, and it, he's showing us, he has it with uh, peas and also with, uh, with, with bacon. Um, and, um, and one kind of cool thing that, um, that they had told me when we were preparing for this event is that this dish, which is very traditional in Romania, uh, was also um, uh, made a lot by the Benedictine monks. So guess, guess where the origin of, of eggs Benedict comes from. <laughs> <laughs> so I know some of you, Kat, Kathy's in, L, in LA, I know. Uh, so it's, it's brunch time for you. <laughs> So this is also good for brunch. Okay. No, no. Ricordati, ci condividi anche questa ricetta, giusto? Non ho capito, scusa, ci anche questa ricetta. Sarà fatta. Yeah, he'll, he'll also share the recipe too. So this is like a gourmet, gourmet egg benedict. Yeah. 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 This is probably better, uh, probably paired better with the, the dry white wine, I would think. Si, si è bien a più con il famoso questo, o con la barra dolce. Yeah, this is better uh, paired with the dry. Yeah. But he has another dish that's going to pair with the sweet wine. Yeah, and then... Wow. So we're jealous. That looks good. Very nice. Wow. Amazing. Buono, fai così. Very good. Very good. This is with the, the, the children in Italy do this. When something's good. <laughs> <ride> Bene, è l'ultimo piatto. Allora, fi finiamo con l'ultimo piatto e presentiamo il, um, il nostro famoso, sempre il Davide, eh, no famoso, scusa, uh, l'Albana. Albana Dolce, so it's a sweet Albana. You have to explain very well. And um, as you told, uh, it's uh, the most important uh, well, um, white variety we have in uh, Romagna, the first uh, wine, Italian white wine in Italy, that it was for the first time the DOCZ in uh, 1987. Uh, and, uh, and also it's uh, one of the first Italian white uh, variety. And, um, you, you, you told uh, already okay. everything yeah, about this, uh, this uh, amazing wine, and I hope you enjoyed. And uh, of course, we wait for um, the new recipe of uh, Ricardo to pair with uh, with with, uh, with uh, this uh, Albana sweet version. So all of these wines are, are sold um, on our website veravinogusto.com. I, uh, it looks like Jeff uh, from Uncorked won't be joining us, but, uh, but they, also, uh, they also sell these wines. Um, uh, and, and we also have um, other Albana wines. We have a dry Albana and then a, uh, a, also an Albana made um, in Amphora. So it's like an orange wine. So it's a very, very versatile grape. Allora, abbiamo, pensato, abbiamo pensato a un piatto eh, diciamo dolce perché in realtà eh, metteremo in un um, pane, um, pane, pane salato ai cereali con uh, sempre un formaggio ma è un formaggio che si può abbinare sia per i dolci che per il salato 
eh, si chiama Squacquerone, viene fatto in Romagna, ah. è latte di mucca. E, niente, è un è una, una, una formaggio di pasta molla, e, è, un semi, è un semi stagionato, è un, è un, è un latte fresco, diciamo. So, um, so he, uh, the, the next dish, the dish that he's doing to pair with the sweet wine, the sweet Albana, is, um, I see he has, he has a, a piece of fresh bread and, um, wow. and he has this uh, cheese called squacarone. Um, a, a little, so a squacarone comes from Romagna and uh, w- one of the, my, one of my first, uh, experiences or ways that I learned about squacarone is I was I was skiing with friends in um in, in Italy and yeah. uh and it was kind of like getting a little bit warm um so so the snow was a bit slushy and my friends who come from Romania said oh the snow's like squacarone <laughs> <laughs> So you can you can get an idea. It's a it's a very soft um, consistency. Um, it's almost like um, uh, it has more consistency than a yogurt. But um, uh, I, I want to say taste wise, it could be a little similar to cottage cheese because it is tangy, but it, it's not it doesn't have the curds like cottage cheese does. Um, I suppose it's a cross between maybe. It could be the best comparison might be cream cheese, but more more liquidy than cream cheese because you need that you need that uh, you need that soft you know consistency. Ci fai vedere squacarone? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, there it is. You see the consistency? Pasta pasta molla. Da noi si dice pasta molla. Spalmabile. Yeah, well, I don't get that in the United States. We have all this research to do on where, where to get squacarone and formaggio di fossa. Il classico abbinamento, il classico abbinamento è piadina, squacarone e rucola. Yeah, it's fresh. It's Um, so, uh, Ricardo, quali sono gli ingredienti squacarone? Poi, eh, eh, latte di mucca. E viene messo della eh, viene fatto cagliare quando coagula viene tirato su e viene fatto maturare per uh, penso 15 20 giorni un mese il formaggio sì. quindi no, hai fatto è... tu il formaggio no no questo qui è sempre preso in caseificio ma qui in locale quindi hai preso Localia. hai preso squacarone um, Chile. Um, excuse me. The um, in Romania, of course, that's where Piadina is born. You know that yeah. flat unleavened yeah. bread, and yeah, that's yeah. the traditional. And they use it with squacarone, and yeah. then they put rocket, uh, rocket leaves on it. Um, yeah, the rucola, which yeah. makes it. Um, a very nice, like a sandwich sort of thing, but you know, and then one of the ladies, I think, she said also they use it with squacaroni and figs, which is nice as well. And maybe ham, they add ham as well. It's a very versatile cheese. Yeah. Look at uh-huh. this uh, apricot jam that oh, he apricot made. Oh, apricot jam. Uh, nice. He made uh, just uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, and and um, he, he takes uh, the, the apricot directly from the, from the um, trees. Abbiamo preparato il dolce con, uh, come ti dicevo, il pane ai cinque cereali. Eh, con una, una base di squacquerone eh, eh, con, eh, composta di, di albicocca, albicocca fresca e eh, la foglia di ravanello che rimane leggermente piccante e può ricordare lo zenzero. So, so, In Roma, so, so la, basically, what, what, he, um, what he has here is like. Um, uh whole wheat bread if you will um with uh the the cheese um the squacarone the apricot jam that he just made from from his apricots in his garden 
and uh, <laughs> and then um, oh, yeah. between, uh, a leaves uh, the leaf of of uh, 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 um, radish, uh, radish yeah radish, radish leaves which I wouldn't think of adding I wouldn't be eating radish leaves cheers cheers let's uh, cheers cheers ti dico l'ultima cosa questo eh, piccolo dolcetto l'ho fatto appositamente perché in Romagna è un classico eh, le nostre le nostre madri facevano fare eh, facevano fare merenda ai propri figli con uh, pane scoperone e zucchero a volte mettevano marmellate dipende se c'era o non c'era comunque era scoperone e zucchero col pane yeah so he he decided to make this dish because it's very traditional um, dish that you give to like kids, mm -hmm. you know, as like a snack and stuff. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense because squacarone is a very common uh, cheese in Romagna and then serve you know, with the fruit. E buono! Buonissimo! Good job! Good job! So I imagine that the um, I imagine that it would it would pair well this wine would pair well with uh, um like tiny, tiny cheese but also with having that um you know the the fruit you yeah, know yeah, giving it a little sweetness the sweetness. Yeah. So a little yeah. contrast yeah. of flavor. And he's made a nice combination between the, um, the cheese that's very delicate and the fruit, which is sweet, and then the um, the radish leaves, which are, are a little bit um, peppery, you know, so that there's a really nice offset there in the flavors. Very good combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to remember to save the radish leaves. <laughs> I usually throw them, throw yeah. them out. <laughs> Who's throwing them out? Well, that's not, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> wow. Well, good. Well, does anyone have any questions? Um, I, uh, I know we have a couple of cooks here. We have a couple of cooks. Any questions? Um, I, 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 I know uh, Rich here will have at least one question. If you had to pick what the top five herbs, you Okay. Ricardo, Ricardo, abbiamo una domanda per te. Vai. Se devi scegliere i primi. Cinque erbe aroma aromatici da utilizzare, erbe yeah, aromatiche per uh, cucinare, qual yeah. quale preferisci? Basilico. Eh, intendi le classiche che si usano per cucinare qui in Romagna? Mm. Eh, you mean in Romagna? Or in Romagna, allora, la no, prima in, in, in tutto, non solo um, nella cucina in Romagna, considerando tutto. In Italy? In Italy, la, allora, le prime sicuramente sono il rosmarino e il basilico. Poi rosmarino seguire... e uh, basil. E poi? Rosmarino, rosmarino, basilico e a seguire c'è la salvia, il timo. Eh, non ho sentito, cosa? A, a seguire, seguire, seguire c'è il timo, e, no scusa, la salvia, il timo e il maggiorano. Okay, so sage, thyme, and margarine. 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 I never use margarine. No, 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 oregano. No, no, oregano. Questo è il basilico viola. Ci sono tante tipologie di basilico. E questo è quello, quello viola. Oh, this is the purple basil. Where's Patty? Oh, she just purple went to walk the dog. Oh, okay. No, we were talking about pur purple basil earlier that it's purple doing basil. cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's for another, another, another talk. <laughs> 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 uh, other questions? Uh, any questions from, from the audience? I think we had, uh, I, um, um, and if you, and if you have other questions, we have a professional chef here. You could ask anything you want. 
there any any wine that you don't go with? From farm to table. Uh, maybe we can first ask a question, which, which wines he prefers to cook with, and then no. Uh, allora, abbiamo una domanda, Riccardo, riguarda um, quando cucini con il vino. Sì. Eh, la domanda è quale, ci sono due domande, quale vino preferisci utilizzare e quale vino no, non utilizzi mai? Per cucinare. Cosa eh. utilizzi, cosa mai? Allora, per cucinare eh, uso eh, frequentemente il vino bianco. Perché so il vino bianco primarily is what he uses. Posso andare avanti? Sì. Allora, il vino bianco eh, lo utilizzo spesso, soprattutto anche nelle verdure, eh, per dare una nota acidula quando mi serve, e eh, soprattutto perché aiuta a, dig a digerire meglio, il, il corpo riesce a digerire meglio. Eh, diciamo la, le fibre della, delle verdure. So, uh, so he uses white, white wine primarily with, uh, with vegetables. Um, he feels that it, it kind of uh, allows the, the fibers of the vegetable to kind of meld, you know, when, with the wine. It, was there another question? <laughs> Abbiamo un'altra domanda. Prego. Uh, get my wine, my wife to want to cook more frequently. <laughs> Quale tipo di vino bianco? Vino Braschi. No, vino Braschi lo bevo. No, no, c'era una domanda qua. Uh, come puoi uh, incoraggiare il tuo, tuo, la tua compagna a cucinare a casa? Incoraggiare come puoi eh, incoraggiare me a cucinare a casa? Allora, in realtà la mia compagna è molto brava a cucinare, ha un gusto molto eh, deciso e casalingo. E, e a volte, e a volte, dammi me, a volte eh, riesce a raggiungere un gusto più intenso del mio. Quindi, io, quindi io utilizzo, eh, utilizzo la, memorizzo, utilizzo il suo gusto per poi trasformarlo. Nella, nei miei piatti. Yeah. So, Ora ti presento, so ti he, un attimo devo tradurre. So he, he, he's not helping you, sorry. So Ricardo was, was giving a lot of compliments to his, his girlfriend right now. Apparently he gets inspiration from his companion. Hi, nice to meet you. Quindi c'è uno qua che è una... Oh, ciao Martina. Piacere. So this is your wife. The cook's... Chef Ricardo's inspiration is his girlfriend Martina. Ciao Martina. Hi, nice to meet you. Bene. Allora, so any other questions? No, uh, I don't think we have any from um, from anyone on the Zoom. So uh, I guess uh, well, Elaine has wants to say something. Just a, a little side note. You know, this is very interesting. Even though I live in Italy, um, I'm about two hours north of the farm that you've been looking at, and we don't have all of those fruits. They're very famous, just like Sheila said, and you can see the cherries and those apricots and whatnot, and then it goes further on in the season. They're really marvelous, and that, that's really where all the good fruits come from. Um, one thing that um, you might keep in mind, I, it's very interesting, I find this very interesting. Um, you obviously are all Italian lovers of Italian food or wines, Uh, you wouldn't be on this otherwise. So you know what the Italian flag looks like, right? Yeah. It's green, it's white, and it's red. Yeah. Now, remember what he composed. Every dish that he did, aperitif, yeah. Yeah. was white, red, and green. And you'll yeah. see that the best dishes in Italy follow the Italian flag. Okay. Yeah. Think of a margherita pizza is white, red, and green. He's, he's very careful and very good at balancing the various flavors, which is not easy. It's not easy. He's very good. Absolutely true. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. you. Thank you so you're much. Making, when you're inventing something also, you know, keep that in mind. So, you know, put something red, put something white and put something green. <laughs> tell your wife, exactly. tell your wife to the gentleman in the red <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is a tip. This is a tip for Mariana here. Red, white, and green. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Got it. <laughs> thank you, Elaine. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ricardo you, and Davide. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, uh, you remember, you can buy all these wines. You can buy them online, uh, verovinogutu.com. We also sell to wine stores and restaurants around the U.S. as well, like Uncorked in uh, in Hermosa Beach. Um, and uh, yeah. and enjoy the rest <laughs> of the evening there. Yeah. And happy <laughs> Memorial Day to everyone uh, listening in as well. We 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 wait for you all here. Ciao. 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 Bye. 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 Bye.